Hey guys, back again. This evening we're gonna talk about rentals in the Fort Collins market, still single families. And really there's a few different business models for rentals um, when we're talking about single families. And the one that I will start talking with it about is um, short-term rentals. And the reason why is because I think they're going to be the um, hardest hit in our immediate future. Um, because let me tell you why. I myself operated three short-term rentals um, for a few years. I still have one um, property listed on Airbnb and VRBO, but I consider it more of a um, executive rental, meaning that I rent it for longer than 29 days. And uh, sorry, 29 nights. Um, so I, I get all of the updates and I'm a part of a few different groups that give me information on short-term rentals. So um, I can tell you right now, the thing that happened, which is, you know, uh, I would say if I was operating either one or multiple short-term rentals would give me chills and, and really be hard for me to sleep at night, which is uh, they allowed 100% refund cancellations to um, any booker, anybody who's booking a, a trip. So, um, and understandably so, you know, honestly, I mean, a lot of us are getting stay at home orders and can't travel. So um, I think it's only fair, but uh, these owners are now getting hit without any income. And one individual I had seen um, had lost $12,000 just in the matter of days of lost bookings. Um, you know, again, due to travel restrictions, you can't really blame them. Uh, I have a flight that's canceled. Um, May 31st, we are going to Florida, which is no longer happening because the flight got canceled. And uh, that's that's May 31st. So we're talking 60 days out right now, and which means anybody who is traveling into Fort Collins or um, coming from afar depending on how long the stay at home order lasts right now we're talking april 30th with social social distancing in fort collins april 17th or april 12th depending on if you look at the state of colorado or larimer county stay at home orders so at least in the immediate future there's going to be very little to no income and um the cool thing though about airbnb is they have a really strong and robust platform and vrbo uh, that can allow uh, hosts to lower their rents um, pretty quickly with uh, adjusting for the demand of the market. So if your goal is to get as many rentals as possible, um, many nights rented, it'll just keep lowering that amount. If, you're, if you have got a stop gap saying, I don't wanna go any lower than this price, um, then you, know, you can at least get a, a certain amount per night. So. Pretty cool that the that technology will eventually help. So this could be a short term, depending on how quickly we get back up and running. Um, but um, you know, 30 to 60 days, probably minimum. Very little to no income for folks that are generally you know used to quite a, quite a bit. Um, you know, looking at kind of the long term, um, the lower lost, uh, lower or lost income really is probably not gonna allow people to travel um, or want to travel. And the feeling of net worth, the stock market now having dropped um, you know, close to 9,000 points, uh, has, a, has an immediate impact on our feeling of our net worth and what we can do and the flexibility that we can have. So um, I would say long-term, you're probably looking at a lot, quite a bit less travel um, what's really sucky about the timing of this, there's never going to be a good time for a, a pandemic to hit, but what's really sucky is um, we're coming right into peak season. I can I, I remember getting through the winters, you know, kind of at a, a minimum price per night and then just seeing, you know, looking to the future in the calendar and what their bookings and what their suggested price per night is. And I'm just like, yes, it's just, you know, here's where we make our money. You know, winter you kind of glide along, hopefully you get your bills paid, uh, make minimal cash flow if any, um, but summer is really where we in Fort Collins, uh, if you were operating a short-term rental, would make a lot of money. And so this is just poor timing. Now hopefully 
if we can get through April and May, um, <clears throat> in June, July, we start picking back up as far as feeling comfortable, then those bookings could potentially pick up real quick. Um, and then one thing that I just kind of was thinking about as far as an Airbnb host, if people are still staying at your property and um, planning on staying there for the next 60 days, that those cleaning crews better be uh, paid double um, or have specific uh, parameters that they've got to take care of. So what are people doing with their short-term rentals? What are some options and ideas? Um, what I've seen is lower the, lowering the rates and rebooking. Again, um, Airbnb has a pretty robust technology behind it and can really allow you to go as low as you wanna go to see if you can get any type of rent coming in. Uh, but again, these stay-at-home orders, uh, shelter in place, or anything like that pretty much limits at least in the short term any type of travel or staying so um, transitioning into an, into an exec rental or long-term furnished rental the only problem with that is it's um, not an immediate replacement of that income there are opportunities though if you get into that transition and uh, run that business rather than a short-term rental business, because they are two separate businesses, um, it is a pretty phenomenal lower headache, lower pain, um, lower income as well though, uh, business model. So you you can absolutely switch into that and maybe hit you know the, uh, the jackpot and get somebody coming in um, who needs a place sooner than later. Um, another kind of fun thing that I think Airbnb is pitching, um, but also I've seen others to a certain extent um, offering is um, a place for first responders or people who are quarantined. Um, a lot of a lot of us, you know, don't have uh, you know big enough houses to one person stay at one side of the house and the other part of the family stay on the other side because you know, they have um, either have been in contact with or exposed to uh, COVID-19. And um, so these Airbnbs offer a um, option. I don't know if they're charging or not, or if they're doing it by the goodness of their heart, I would um, probably assume somewhere in the middle. So, um, but I think that's a really pretty cool opportunity right now, you know, to turn uh, lemons into lemonade, so to speak, you know, provide a service if you have the financial ability, um, not necessarily donating in the, the you know, uh, common um, sense of the word, but being able to provide a massive value if people are in fact infected and do um, need to be quarantined. So that's something that's pretty cool. Uh, again, as we talked about how quick you could sell a house. Like if I started today, I think probably the quickest that it's gonna sell, unless it's an all cash deal, is gonna be 45 to 60 days. So um, again, this is not gonna get you that immediate replacement of your income, but if you see this going anything longer than the 60 to you know 90 days or whatever it may be, because it may, might be really a lot longer, but if it's shorter then you know, the, the next thing kind of ride it out is where, you know, a lot of these short-term rentals probably could be just fine so long as they've got the reserves to get them through these hard times. But um, what would be nice about if you were to sell this, these Airbnbs is they are already staged and beautiful properties generally really high finishes can command probably top dollar. And also, what is the value of that short-term license? Because here in Fort Collins, we are required to be licensed um, by the city, I believe. There is a licensure program that, um, that the value of that license does impact uh, pretty dramatically the price of a home um, to be able to operate a short-term rental. So um, again, I don't think that lowering the rates are gonna do too much for us here in the short term. Transitioning to an executive rental, again, is not a very um, immediate replacement of that income. Um, first responders or quarantine, if you have the ability to uh, donate your space, that's pretty, pretty, a pretty awesome idea. Um, if you feel like this is gonna go anything longer than you know, selling your beautiful home um, that's already staged, for hopefully top dollar on the market or you know 
ride it out, hope it doesn't last very long, and uh, come back on the other side, get those bookings back up. So it gets us down to um, what do I think the long-term impact of uh, the market's gonna be because of the coronavirus. And uh, so um, let's just kind of do a quick recap. Uh, bookings are, are, are gone um, or they're gonna be a whole lot less, which means less income. And if you're getting the bookings, uh, I'm willing to bet that either Airbnb, VRBO or whoever, or just you being a good person are going to want to increase your cleaning, aka your um, expenses, decreasing your bottom line profit. So uh, you could potentially push that on to um, tenants, but I just don't see um, travel being um, that high of a necessity for the, the next while. So uh, that is probably gonna be an expense that you're gonna have to eat. Furniture is just like a car. Unfortunately, when you um, have that furniture and use that furniture, used furniture just doesn't have a great allure to it. So that's a you know a, a zero dollar figure, or at least very minimal. Maybe you have a garage sale and can recoup some of those funds if um, you do end up wanting to turn it into a long term rental, which we'll get to. But at, at least the value that you bought is gonna be a whole lot less than the value you'll get on the secondary market. I can tell you that banks aren't gonna be financing um, short-term rentals, um, or at least not, um, there's gonna be, they're gonna be looking at them a, a whole lot harder with a magnifying glass. They're gonna to wanna to see, um, you know, historicals, what your future rentals are looking like. Um, and I just wouldn't, wouldn't bank on a refinance Maybe you can find a banker or a lender who's willing to take that risk. And if you are, you might be paying a, a lot higher percentage um, to get that loan. Um, but I would not bank on a refinance, which, which then leads me into um, kind of some of the um, opportunities that the government's providing, which is an SBA loan, which I, I believe an SBA 7A loan you can get for lost rents, um, but it's not a convertible loan that everyone's talking about these days about uh, a forgive a loan that's essentially a grant. No, this would add debt service. So long-term, your bottom line, again, gets chopped. So this profitable business that all these people have been operating for many years, um, and it's been a great service to the community and travelers. Um, everyone loves Airbnbs. I travel myself using Airbnbs. Um, but it, you know, people generally are not doing this um, just because they're having fun. It's a good income potential for them. And um, I can tell you the reason why when I was operating three and uh, I wish I would have gotten the license because I do believe there's value in that license. But when I um, got pushed into changing those because of the ordinance that the city of Fort Collins put into place, it was not that tough of a, tough of a, tough of a decision because the juice just was not worth the squeeze from my perspective. The income was great, but the work was, be, you know, just as great. It was, uh, you were running an operation, a hotel operation. You were checking tenants in, um, cleaning, dealing with annoying maintenance work orders because the people did not know the building or the unit. Um, and so when I turned it back into a long-term rental, yeah, I might've lost some income, but I whole, got a whole lot to I can't say more hair because I lost all my hair, but um, got a whole lot more sleep at night not having to worry about that. So um, an SBA loan, could you get more debt service? Yes, but potentially uh, decreases your bottom line. So what do I think are the three possibilities that could come of um, the current environment with short-term rentals? You could ride it out, which a lot of these people put a lot of work into these buildings. and. Um, I'm sure would hate to see that go. They poured tons and tons of money into these these uh, flips and um, with furniture, uh, you know, appliance upgrades, furniture. Um, they've poured thousands of dollars into it, and you know, I, I don't see them parting with these properties very easily. Um, but um, if you're going to do that, 
you're gonna need reserves and you're gonna need to ride it out for the next three, six months. And 2020 is just gonna basically be a pretty low income year for you. But um, if you can ride it out for three to six months with reserves, um, hopefully we can get through this thing and people feel comfortable traveling and booking again um, sooner than later. You could reposition it um, as an executive renter, rental or a long-term rental. Um, again, that's what I did with one of my Airbnbs and very happy, but again, I after these next renters that move out, well, actually, I might have a cancellation, which I'm okay with because my plan was actually to turn it into a long-term rental anyways, get rid of the furniture, and um, uh, which I'm very happy with. I have all the systems in place for a long-term rental. Um, and so, but if you wanted to reposition into an executive rental, there is a market for that. Um, and people are actually traveling more than you'd suspect wanting a place for 30 plus days. Uh, registered nurses um, or, you know, travel nurses, uh, professors at CSU, um, people who are building homes, uh, you know, executives who are going to be in town for, you know, a month or multiple weeks that would just rather book a place for a month. So, there's definitely opportunity there. And I think that that would be something that if you are open to that idea and willing to still use those same channels of marketing, decrease your income a little bit, you're gonna not need a cleaner nearly as much, but you are gonna turn the unit over anywhere from four to shoot, you could potentially turn it over 12 times in a year for an executive rental. But um, that's another option. Or finally, the third option obviously is to sell. Um, you know, I don't, I don't see any Airbnb hosts or owners at this point selling right away. Um, they're gonna ride out the storm for probably the next few weeks to a month or two months. But um, if bookings do not pick up, if the market does not turn around, um, probably both the stock market, employment, um, travel restrictions, if those things do not turn around quickly, um, I would assume probably in about three months, once we've had about two or three mortgage payments from these owners without much or any income, um, it's gonna start feeling a little bit easier to sell. On top of if they've had any type of impact on their personal jobs or employment, um, we are gonna be moving into the selling season um, for Fort Collins and um, if there is a time, it'd probably be during that time. But um, I suspect that this is a, a labor of love for a lot of people. Uh, they've spent a lot of time, a lot of passion, or a lot of energy, um, heart and desire into these buildings. So it's gonna take quite a bit for, for them if they do decide to sell. But ultimately, you know, kind of coming back again, less bookings, less income, increased cleaning, furniture is not worth anything. You're not gonna be able to refinance. You could look at an SBA loan, but your debt service is gonna go up. You could ride it out if you got reserves for the next three to six months, reposition an executive suite, and as an executive suite or long-term rental, um, or, you know, turn around and sell it. You could turn around and sell it right now, right away, um, while we're getting into selling season, while values in Port Collins have not necessarily been hit touched yet. Um, we don't know if they're going to be um, impacted. Uh, you know, this could drive um, a, an increased supply of top dollar properties onto the market. Um, who knows how many, you just don't know. Uh, but I do see it more happening more in the next three to six months of these properties coming onto the market if the travel and the bookings and they don't reposition it or turn it into a long-term rental. So. Anyways, we'll move on to uh, next. We're going to move on to um, duplexes, uh, triplexes, fourplexes, and just a long-term rental for a single family. Um, so I look forward to talking to you guys about that and what I see happening there. Have a great evening.